Let's take a look at some of the flight instrument's similarities and differences. The most prominent instrument on the PFD is the attitude indicator. It's quite large, easy to interpret, and rather self-explanatory. It does, however, have a few unique features not found on its analog gauge cousin. If the pilot becomes too aggressive on the pitch, starting at 50 degrees above and 30 degrees below the horizon, red warning chevrons appear pointing in the direction of the horizon. This can be a big help if you become disoriented. Also, if the aircraft's pitch exceeds plus 30 degrees or minus 20 degrees, or when the bank angle is 65 degrees or better, the PFD automatically declutters, turning off its less important data displays. This helps focus your attention on the attitude indicator so you can more quickly correct the situation. Notice that the entire PFD background, the Earth, horizon, and sky, moves. The yellow airplane symbol remains stationary. The slip and skid indicator is a small horizontal line located under the triangle roll pointer. It is, at first, hard to recognize, and its small size is sometimes a challenge for the newly initiated. It works the same, however, as the standard inclinometer. Step on the line instead of the ball. Underneath the attitude indicator is a large horizontal situation indicator. The HSI displays a rotating compass card with the usual cardinal points, numeric labels, and tick marks. It also depicts information common to any other HSI. However, there are some differences. Using the soft keys, the G1000 allows you to choose to view the HSI as a complete unit or as an arc. A large heading box is centered on top of the HSI, allowing for a direct digital readout of your heading. This makes selecting and holding a precise heading a piece of cake. As on most HSIs, a rotatable heading bug operates on the compass rows and marks the desired heading. You can use it as a memory device or actually steer the airplane with it in conjunction with the autopilot. There are two smaller boxes on either side of the HSI. The selected heading appears in a box left of the lubber line in light blue numerals. The selected course appears in a box to the right of the lubber line. It becomes a magenta color if the navigation source is the GPS, or green if the navigation source originates from the VOR or localizer receivers. There is also a magenta diamond, the current track indicator, that appears on the outer rim of the HSI. This is basically an indication of your airplane's track across the ground, useful for staying on course and route with strong crosswinds. Simply fly the heading that puts the diamond on top of the CDI head. Bearing pointers can be overlaid on the HSI to show bearings to additional nav sources using the PFD soft keys. Another feature of the G1000 is a wide magenta line, called a trend vector. It displays the current turn rate up to 24 degrees per 6 seconds. A magenta arrowhead appears at 25 degrees. This trend vector indicates where the heading will be 6 seconds from now at your current rate of turn. These vector lines are present in other flight instruments as well. Notice that the turn rate indicator's tick marks are placed at 9 degrees and 18 degrees either side of the lubber line. Doing some quick math, 18 degrees in 6 seconds is 3 degrees per second, a standard rate turn. 9 degrees in 6 seconds is a half standard rate turn. Set a bank angle to place the trend vector on the tick mark to obtain the desired rate of turn.